So back to Hogan. Hoagland goes to Worley. Worley over to Escano. Escano just, oh, goes over the net. All these shots within firing range there for the goalie. Bella Schulz will start it again for Golden West College. The wrestlers trying to get things going here on offense. Little pump fake by there by Hogan. Gantz shot misses. So now the Hornets are on the attack. We'll set their lineup in just a second. And I like that look that she just had. Really trying to analyze the field, see where she can get that shot off. Decides to dump it off, gets one more look for a little bit of a better angle, but just misses up high there. Nice little block made there by Evelyn Teeter in goal. Looking for that inside corner on that top left. Trying to get some top cheddar. Block again. So it's Teeter in goalie for Golden West. Both these teams starting to set up in their formations here. Fullerton pushing strong on the defensive end. Going down low to Persephone Taylor as it's stolen there. A little bit of a miscommunication there. There's a really big wide open lane there for uh, the wrestlers to get the ball down and really get a shot off there. Going down deep to Salerno. Salerno shoots and scores for the Hornets. So Nikki Salerno gets in. That'll be her 31st goal of the season for Fuller to College. Coach Martinez across the pool and relaying some instructions to her uh, defense there. Making sure they're in formation, keeping them nice and tight. So the Hornets quickly up two to nothing. Heavy pressure against Golden West, as you see there, Jerry. I mean, they're playing extreme, oh, pushing man-to-man. Yeah. -man. Go in the middle, steal, made one more time. And that's gonna work in their favor. I mean, just enough pressure to get the ball out into their possession, and just like that, we're across the field, or across the pool, excuse me, going the other way. Foul called against Golden West. Ball in play. Quickly over to Wong. Wong, little. Trash in there, Wong tries to go deep down to the middle to get it to Martinez. Martinez shot. There it is, beautiful. Across the middle of the field. So it went to Martinez, then back across the middle. And that one is by Torres, who gets her 29th goal of the season. And tight coverage there by Lily Worley, number nine. But Hornets able to find that quick pocket and get a quick strike there. I like that ball placement. I like that we were able to move the ball there. Got a great crowd here today. Do we have a good turnout? Yeah. Here on 90.1 KBPK, we're getting a little discussion by the referee. Ball back in play. Hogan trying to look for help out there, gets it over to Worley. Worley goes down low. Rise up and a shot taken there by Jerome. Great defense there by Adriana Wong, staying up front, staying nice and tall to really make herself a little bit of a barrier there before having to take that shot off. You can see Hogan trying to, trying to get away on her side. Pressing defense now. So Golden West is now coming up high, trying to take things away. Martinez, Turn and a goal once again, and that goal is once again by Torres. Down low in the middle, Jerry. Goal number four. Martinez doing an excellent job maneuvering around the pocket there. She had a double coverage there and an extra third slide coming in from that extra defender pulling away. But even in that Russell with the, t the time winding down, 3-2-1, able to fire off a shot into that corner there. So once again, the attack goes down. Escano on the outside looking for something. In the game now, Kayla Nieves in for Golden West College. Out here on the far side. Go back to the top, go to Hogan. Hogan goes down low to Worley one more time to Nieves. 
trying to find somebody down right behind the net. Pump fake shot, blocked right there one more time. And so, big defense. Amanda Ellerberg up in the inside, once again, making herself a big screen there, making herself a big presence on the defensive front, helping out her goalie there. Adriana Wong going down, foul down low, so ball gets turned over to Golden West. Three minutes and three seconds left in this period. Hornets up by four, quick start for them in this game. Pushing defense by Daniela. She goes down. Once again, they try to go back low. Double team. Foul on the Hornets. Restart for Golden West. Once again, go down low. Double team down low. It's going to be against the Hornet one more time. Adriana Wong, Ellerbrook, and uh, is it uh, Lechuga in there for the Hornets playing some defense? So the Hornets take over the ball. Airtram scanning the field, able to get it back up. Goes to Wong. Wong, nice oh, little fake. Like that inside move there. Going down low, looking to make a turn, gets double fouled. Down low. Looks like they were going for that quick, uh, quick offense there. And that was De La Mora that got smothered. De La Mora down low. De La Mora scores for the Hornets. So Kate De La Mora scores her 17th goal of the season. And it's now balanced by Gabe Martinez's team. It's the Hornets five, Golden West College zero. Give a few more substitutions. And I like the control that the Hornets are having right now on their side of the pool. They're uh, getting these really good passes off. They're controlling it well, catching everything in one, scanning the field, and they're being really vocal. Jerome back in the game. For Golden West. A lot of defensive pressure up in the center of the pool there. So we're going to have one of the players put in the penalty box. So the Hornets will swim short with 2.19 to go. Power play by the Rustler, see if they can get on the board here, Jerry. Nice, back in off the post. What a shot. Rebound in there on a beautiful shot by Daniela Jerome, who finally gets the wrist. Oh, it was, oh, I thought it made it, Jerry. I thought it did as well. I thought it might have bounced off that back corner, but referee's looking like it, saying it's a, so it's a I guess ball. The sun and the water deceived Jerry and I right there. <laughs> Got both of us there. I like that play though. I mean, the. the nice little backhanded shot. Oh, yeah. Great block right there by Evelyn Teeter of Golden West. And that's really all it is when you're playing that man up offense is getting the defense to move, getting them to initiate your offense so that you can move the ball, find the open lane, and find that unprotected offensive player and get them to fire a good shot. And Russell is able to find that in the second hole there. Holds on to it. Looking for Louis. Ruiz is coming out high to help out. Go down a little low, just tipped out. So it goes back to the Hornets who break quickly. Airtram, the deep pass. There to De La Mora, slides it in for her second goal of the game. Great job by De La Mora, breaking away off of that shot from the wrestlers to give herself a little bit of a lead for that fast break going back the other way. Goal 18 of the season. Great vision by Airtram as well, the goalie. Able to scan the field and get that long pass over. Get the Hornets up another point. Salerno comes back in the pool for Fullerton. Out goes Lughart. So the Hornets quickly up. Six to nothing once again. Well, one of the better goalies who's got a, almost a 62% save rate for Fullerton as a fast break by the Hornets. Three down the middle. We'll see if anybody picks anybody up. Pump fake, another great shot by Nikki Salerno, who's now got 32 goals for the season, 17 assists, the leading scorer for this water polo team for Fullerton. And there it was again. Airtram once again making a big save, 
and the defensive front in the goal, able to scan the field, get that ball down towards, uh, was it Salerno? And Salerno able to hold the goalie up, take a quick fake one, two, find the back of the net. Kayla Nieves comes back in the game along with Alexia Cooper. So you got Jerome, Worley, Cooper Nieves out there for Golden West College. Along with Escano will be on the attack for the wrestlers. Little help going over there. Escano getting smothered in the water. Quick little pass over to Nieves, getting hounded all over the place. Ryan Osborne in the front door, out the back door, getting his exercise today. You know, he's going as many feet as the young ladies are swimming in this pool today. And I got to tell you, it's a lot of effort to be in that pool for as long as these athletes are in there for. I mean, I gave it a try for one practice when I went with my friend. I mean, I was gassed first 15, 20 minutes, and I can't imagine what these girls are going through. Well, I tell you what, they're not breathing any harder than Ryan right now. Fast break once again <laughs> by the Hornets. Actually, I think Ryan's a lot wetter than the girls are in the pool. <laughs> He's building up quite a bit of a glow there. He is. But we so, got to love a good technical producer getting the job done. Gabe Martinez, coach for your Fuller College Hornets. Two-time national champion there. We get our so first. we get a timeout. Yeah. Hornets up 7 nothing. Great start offensively. It is. So Gabe Martinez, OEC Coach of the Year 2014, 2016, 2018, 2019, 2000. 21 and then twice national champion in 2014 his team went 35 and 0 and then 2019 this hornet team was 32 and 3 this is a young man that generates excitement for this game of water polo here in southern california one of the better international coaches when you come down to water polo when you look at him and you see what he does, Jerry. You, you, you know, you talked in this general senses about not being able to make it down. I know you've never, never been out, or at least out to only one practice session out here. His young ladies swim for miles oh, upon yeah. miles. So it's that old adage, like if you relate it to any other sport, I'm going to practice you harder. So when game time comes around, that's the easiest game of the week. It's a piece of cake. It's it's just. That's the relaxing day, and you look forward to game day because you know what? That lap after lap after lap after lap is not what's going on. It's swimming a game. And so you look forward to the competition. And again, when you're playing somebody else, your practice sessions are as hard or harder than the best teams in the nation oh, yeah. on a community college level. Oh, and that's that's certainly true. I played lacrosse at the junior college level, and we went up against Cal Berkeley, Sonoma State. We played Nevada Reno. We had Simon Frazier up in Canada come visit us. And our practices throughout the week, they were no different than they were on game day. Everything was intense. You wanted to play at the best ability so that when we came up to those big key games like uh, Cal Berkeley, one of our biggest matchups of the year, we go in there ready to go because we're the underdogs as a JUCO program going up against some of these Division One, Division Two teams that play in the MCLA. But we got to go in there like we're going to go win the MCLA Division One title. And rightfully so. I mean, we went 13-3 and three that season. And I, th I don't think there was a single practice where we didn't run at least three, four miles throughout the entire thing. Maybe a good 30 half-mile warm-up or something. But, I mean, we were running up and down. If we weren't going to be the best team with our sticks, we were going to be the most conditioned team out there. There's no way you're going to beat us uh, on the field with running. But... A little bit of stick twirling and ball handling, I'll give you that, but you're not going to outrun me on this field today. And I think Gabe Martinez really implies that on this team. And I have class uh, sometimes when these uh, ladies are practicing out here. I mean, I'll go into my statistics class, come out an hour and a half later, they're still swimming laps like, <laughs> like nothing's changed. And meanwhile, I've gone through my whole lecture, but 
conditioning really, really big for this team, and it's paying off. These girls are conditioned. They're able to stay out there, and they're giving it their all every single second. So we head to the second period here with the Hornets up 7 to nothing over the Golden West wrestlers. Ball is dropped. The Hornets get there first. And there's that speed from the Hornets, that conditioning, able to pull through. Jerome is going to go down all the way till she stopped on the offensive side. Great defensive stop there from the wrestlers. So the wrestlers come back up. Stephanie Taylor and Evelyn Teeter able to get the stop there. Teeter drops it off to Hogan. Hogan back in the game along with Escano. She goes to Escano up on top. Escano getting pressured, goes down low. Looking for something in the middle. Stolen, oh, almost stolen by the Hornets. Time expires, so no shot is taken. So a turnover defensively. The Hornets come out. They break out quickly with Nikki Salerno. Salerno looking at Wong on the far side of the drive. Flips it back over to Ellerbrook. The top. Defensive the pressure. Pool. Persephone Taylor there for the wrestlers. Lughart goes down low. Just a little floater. And so the wind just takes it up and it drops in there one more time for the eighth goal of the game. Nita Torres finding that top corner that was good. You know where mama likes to hide the cookies in the top shelf. That's it. <laughs> Jerry knows where to look. Oh yeah. Golden West being blank so far, really hasn't had any difficult shots on goal or many. Come out high defensively by the Hornets and look hard. She does that, foul call. Try to go down low. Turn shot wide. That one not close to being on the net. So the defense is just all over there. It looks like fly paper and water when you look at this Hornet defense. Adriana Wong brings it back out on the outside. High on the top of the outside. Goes down low. Flip in one more time. And the Hornet. Now it looks like bread and butter is what you're going out there as Ellerbrook scores on that one. And you look at her now, her 12th goal of the season. Wong now with her 20th assist for this team as the stats are just going and glowing as you look what's happening in the game for the Hornets now. So the shutout continues. 9-0 Hornets. Here in this match. Lughart pressing again on Hornets there. Sofia Martinez as well. Steal down low. That steal made there. Coach Martinez Play yelling Chuga. at that Martinez. Mart <laughs> Sorry. Yelling out defense, defense. Fast break all the way down there. Martinez. So a foul on the play. They'll get a penalty shot. Jordan Lickhart comes in, skips it into the goal. And that's her 30, I'm gonna say her 32nd goal. So she had 30 coming into this game, 23 assists, 19 steals. Mm -hmm. She was number one in goals made, number one in assists on this team, and number one or tied for first with 19 steals so far this season. And with the defensive game that she's playing today so far, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if she takes that number one spot. I mean, she's already pressing right there, nearly getting the save and transitioning the ball over, but foul called. Triple crown, taking the triple crown lead for a team on those three categories. We love a good multi-tool athlete as well. Well-rounded on all aspects, dangerous on the field anywhere. Shooting percentage is high in the game of water polo. Wong takes it, drives towards there, goes up, flips it over, hits the bar. She had the shot, and it gets knocked away. That was Martinez, excuse me, Sophia Martinez taking the shot. Flipped away at the last second. Once again, Ashley Hogan, who was the quarterback on top for this team, they try to go back out to Hogan. Stolen there, fast break made. Nikki Salerno, the far side, trying to find somebody driving down the middle. Looks like it's gonna go back the other way. 
And Lugart with a defensive presence there, able to help Salerno move the ball the Hornets way, but it's gonna sadly go back. High pressure by the Hornets, and that is Jordan Lugart that comes out assisted with Haluska. Haluska comes out now high. Alexandra all over the offensive player. Cooper for Golden West makes her throw it wildly over to Worley. That gets over to Ruiz, no shot made. They're gonna dump it into the corner there, try to save themselves some time on the shot clock. But Airtram already scanning the field and looking for the deep pass, and she'll find it. Goes to Lockhart. Lockhart in the middle, drops it off right there. Right on the doorstep to Salerno. So once again, it's now 11 to nothing. Get a little substitutions by both these teams. So we'll try and set the lineup for you as everybody's coming in and out. Right now, it looks like the plunge at your local county pool. Everybody's sitting, looking at each other going, am I in, am I out? Am I in, am I out? Jerry and I are sitting here thinking, mm, neither one of us are getting in there. No. <laughs> Although earlier when we were setting up and it was pretty warm out, I do have to say a nice dip in the pool did seem pretty nice. <laughs> Luckily cooled down here a little bit. Thought I'd see our partner, Ryan Osborne. Emma Hines now in the game for Golden West College. They try to go down low. Another steal for the Hornets. Great slide there by Adriana Wong coming in for that second defender. Martinez, one on one, Sophia. Sophia, and it gets blocked. So nice block by Evelyn Teeter as we're gonna get So we're gonna get a 30 second timeout. So we're gonna get substitution for Golden West. Coach not happy with what he's seeing out there. Back in the game is Persephone Taylor. What a pretty name, Persephone. Very nice name there. Brings back the old days of theater. 15 seconds on the shot clock left for the wrestlers. Once again, high transition. Schultz getting hammered out there. Defense comes over again. Jerome gets smothered. Ball goes over to Scano. Ooh, nearly catching that top corner. But once again, they come away denied. Look at the fast break by the Hornets. Luska goes down the middle, flips it over to Parter. Ellerbrook and Ellerbrook drops it in there. Back into that top left corner. Quick, nice and easy passes down the field. Or excuse me, down the pool from these ladies. And they'll get up another point. What a bullet pass by Eritram there. Able to get it on a thread. Catch every single pass right in stride. Well, I thought I'd see Ryan Osborne wading his way back out here, or at least coming upstream, but uh, haven't seen him. Schultz flips it over quickly to it. Malia Escano, Golden West. She goes down low. So we're gonna get an exclusion against the Hornets, shot, goes away, ball back to the Hornets. Interesting take there by the wrestlers. You know, they got a full 30 seconds again. I would have thought they would have tried to set up their offense again, try to get a good look, but they'll fire away right away. And Fast break by the Hornets. Yep. Torres takes it over to Sofia Martinez. Martinez on the outside, comes back in the middle to Torres. So Martinez gets it, immediately releases it. There's Torres in there, and all she does is guide it with her hand. Martinez gets the assist. Torres gets the goal, 29th goal for Torres, and that is now the eighth assist for Martinez this season. And I like that play that they just made there, and that just shows that connection that this team has non-verbally to know where they need to be on the, on the pool to be able to get that quick pass there. It's same like lacrosse, a quick stick pass, 
catch them on the opposite corner and able to strike that in there. Great plant there by Torres. Defense comes up, Lughart all over there. They drop it all over to Worley. Worley gets rid of it quickly. Once again, the far side of the pool. Nobody there for Golden West. An empty place. So the void. Go down to Wong. Wong rises up, finds open on the other thing. Lughart shoots. That time it's blocked by Teeter. Look at that effort there by Lughart. Getting caught underneath, up by the net, but nearly able to get that rebound herself. Timeout, Golden West College with 1.27 left. It's the Hornets 13, the Rustler 0, here on 90.1 KBPK. Ryan Osborne, RJ, Joseph Pablinko, Jerry, and the old guy sitting by the pool here at 90.1 KBPK. Where did our mystery man go? I'm not too sure. Ryan Osborne, what you do is you walk across campus. There's this big opening in the ground. It's filled with water. Can't miss it. Yes, it has been called the aqueduct before from former Corey Nealon student, the 145 sports broadcasting class. It's a nice facility. Yes, let me say it now. There's Gabe Martinez and all the women that have been in the water polo program deserve a much better facility. Oh, 100%. Thank you, Jerry. 100%. With the statistics that Martinez has brought for this Hornets team over the past few years, well-deserved in yeah. in, into a new stadium. You know, and I mean... You know, you look at some of the other facilities around the area where they've had championship programs. Uh, what Gabe has done with the young women that come through this program and to be national champion, to be the OEC coach of the year, to get the young women that he gets in here, those student athletes. I think he's passed, I think over 200 student athletes in his entire career have gone on to the next level. So, I mean, you know, any man that can do that, as an educator coach, deserves the best, oh, yeah. not less than the best as a facility. And that's all you're going to get out of Martinez. And like I said earlier, when I drive or when I come by in class, I only ever hear him, hey, let's work on this. We need to do this. We did well in this this last game, but it can be that much better. And that's what you like in these season coaches, the ones that have experience in those big playoff games in that crunch time, they're gonna give you that insight that you might not get from some of the less experienced coaches. And that's just gonna get you a little bit more well-rounded to get ready for that next level play. We have another timeout where here comes the big puddle heading back towards me, Ryan Osborne. That's his water polo name. So for any of you wondering, when I say the big puddle is at the table, now we'll know in the future as as he'll slowly look at him man he looks like he has swam up the aqueduct to get here doesn't he <laughs> oh there it is there so there's his problem joseph pavlenko just told me he's a hockey player and so he sees this as a melted sheet of ice and that's his problem he, he just on it. he doesn't know what to do he's a little confused he's bedazzled bewildered befuddled be twixed. Well, no, I don't want to say that because he'll look for a candy bar. Here, let me pull. Bewitched. Up my, uh, let me pull up my thesaurus here. We'll get a good uh, list going here. Be wild. Bewildered. Table. Bemoaned. <laughs> befuddled. Yeah, befuddled befuddled. was there. Yeah. I think we threw that in there. He is the be puddle. Ryan Osborne, the producer, director, and founder of us doing the games here on 90.1 KBPK for water polo along with his partner, Joseph Pavlenko. So we're gonna get him on the air, Jerry. I'm gonna scoot you out of the way in a second. It's been fun having you for two periods, but we're gonna let Ryan, I'm gonna let him take over in a second. When he gets here, don't well, leave yet. It's been an absolute we'll, pleasure to be here. It's been we'll, a lot of fun. We'll make him get here first before we take <laughs> him off, take you off the air. I'll probably have to wait an extra few seconds, let him catch his breath, take a quick one too, and then let Wong him fire on. Wong takes it over to Martinez. Martinez goes down low. Nice little shot there. 
by De La Mora. That is now her second goal of this game. And you look at what De La Mora, she's got 18 goals, five assists, five steals as the big puddle shows up. De La Mora getting that backhand, uh, backhand shot there. Almost like the same one we saw earlier from the wrestlers. So what I'm gonna do in a second here, Jerry, I'm gonna trade you out for Ryan Osborne as uh, you'll go back along the way and uh, Joe will move out of his way and Ryan will get here for at least the uh, third game. So Ryan, why don't you slide back in here and call at least the uh, last part of this game. I know you're as wet as the young women are down in the pool. Hornets up 14 to nothing in this game. Now, now the voice of Fullerton College water polo here on 90.1 KBPK, Ryan Osborne. Thank you, Mark, as we take a look at the end of the second quarter, halftime. You know what, I'm just in time. This is fantastic, but when you take a look at this matchup, Mark, we knew that Fullerton coming in, Obviously one of the perennial powers in the state of California, but they've really put it on display so far. Excellent job of making sure they have pressure defensively, getting out to the wings and the flats as quickly as possible. And it just seems like Golden West has absolutely nowhere to be able to go with their offense. So Fullerton College asserting themselves with a 14 to nothing lead here at the half as Fullerton College and Golden West battle it out here on 90.1 KBPK. And we thank you for joining us here on 90.1 KBPK. Once again, I'm Ryan Osborne. Over to my left is the Buddha of Babel, as we call him, Mr. Mark Pavlovich, the voice of the Fullerton College Hornets as well. So, Mark, when you take a look at how this first half went, your assessment on how Fullerton is playing. Well, I tell you what, if this was a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you would have a lot of jelly and it would be smothered in peanut butter because that's exactly what they did in the pool. They smothered Golden West College. They never gave them an opportunity to get in this match whatsoever, Ryan, and you've got to look at it. Everybody was uh, part of the game, not just one person, but if you go down, all the top scorers had something to do in this part of the game. And when you mentioned that, Mark, that's one thing that Coach Gabriel Martinez mentioned a lot about his team is the fact that he likes to have a very balanced scoring the tech. I mean, the last time that you and I were out here just two weeks ago, there was a different top score for this Fullerton College water polo team. But now all of a sudden you see Lughart get her opportunity. You see Wong continue to be great for this Fullerton College staff. When you look at a balanced attack and you talk about a balanced attack it just seems like Fullerton College has the consistent weapons to get themselves not only far just in conference play but in the state well when you look at Lughart who had 30 coming in then you look at the rest of the players when you look at Torres she had 30 Salerno had 19 you look at what haluska has got with 22 Martinez who has been on the board multiple times so far this afternoon they are the types that have done it. And then you look at the bottom down here with Wong and what she has done. She's added to her assist record. That's where it is. And then, Ryan, you look up at the goalie, giving up absolutely nothing with a save of 61.3%. And once again, no goal scored again today. Her averages just goes up higher in the pool. Well, Mark, one of the things that one of the things that is also impressive to me, and it's more of a team stat than anything. You take a look at their stats overall, 92.3% win percentage. You want to look at the entire state of California and think to yourself, okay, if I'm winning 92% of my games, that means that out of 30 games, I'm going to win about 28 or so. Yeah, and, and I mean, you look right now, you've got Orange Coast. This is overall 14-2, and two, Fullerton 12-1. and one. Then sitting there behind him, 13 and 4 is Riverside. Then overall, it goes downhill sort of fast. Golden West, 9 and 7. Saddleback, 8 and 6. And then followed up by Cypress, 4 and 6. But conference has just started, so everybody's just sort of sitting on each other's shoulders right now in conference. I mean, you want to take a look at these conferences, Mark. Just look at Fullerton College so far, 12 and 1 record. 
The only one who's close to that in all of the other conferences across the state is West Valley at 12 and 0. Other than that, you've got 10 and 5 from Long Beach, maybe 8 and 3 from Mount Sac. Other than that, there is no other team that for the moment being at least can really compare to those two record wise at least. So Fullerton College with a really nice start to the season. But you also look at the fact that once they get into conference, it just seems like they have the ability to, well, let's put it plainly, steamroll opponents. So this is this going to be another 2019 season where Gabe only lost three games in that entire season? You know, if you hear the buzz around Fullerton College and also talk to some of the people surrounding the program, I think that's the exact sentiment that you'll hear from everyone is that everyone thinks that this is the type of team that is built almost exactly like 2019 where they have the, uh, the speed to get up and down the pool as quickly as possible. They have the defensive tenacity to get out and disrupt an opposing offense. So for Fullerton College, it's really just a sense of does this team hunker down in the next couple of weeks and finish off conference? So we're back underway here in the third quarter. Eight minutes going on the clock. Ball is dropped and Fullerton will end up winning the draw. Ball over towards the right. It goes over to Alexandra Halushka. Halushka looking for a teammate. She'll find one in Riley Jackson. Jackson at the point. She'll look for someone. Goes over to Lechuga and it will end up being a foul for the moment being. Left hand side over, it goes to the wing, now into the flat, Lechuga, ball faking, shot goes off the post and wide. 14 to nothing is our score between Fullerton College and Golden West live from Fullerton College. Ryan Osborne joined by Mark Pavlovich and a few minutes ago, you heard Jerry on the air as well. You wanna thank Joseph Pavlenko for being the technical director here today making sure that we get ourselves on the air as well. There's a shot that is taken and a save will be made by Aritim. And she will end up taking possession in Fullerton College. One of the things you notice about this team as it goes all the way up to Anushka Jayevsky, Jayevsky along the right-hand side, one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, it hits the crossbar and ends up staying out. Oh, so close for Jayevsky as she tried to go bar down top right and it just stayed across the line. But you notice with this Fullerton College team, very businesslike when they're in the pool. You don't really see them joking around or laughing as much because they've got one goal in mind. 14 to nothing is our score, and you can change that. That is 14 to one. As the goal will be scored there by Golden West. They get themselves on the board, and 14 to one is our score. You know, I know you were setting up cameras for Clara, but I think you forgot about us over here. <laughs> Ryan and I both getting all the reflection now from uh, the pool. Carrot, Joe across the way, RJ on our far camera. I want to thank RJ for joining us and giving us his time, help us get those cameras up and running. Far side. Only 13 seconds left on the shot clock. Goes over to Jayevsky inside. She looks for Halushka. Halushka goes over to her right, gets that one to go. Fullerton College with yet another goal here. And the Fullerton College Hornets make it 15 to one. And Halushka coming into this game had 19 right. She's already got a couple today. That puts her around 21-22 for this season as assists keep building up for this team. And of course, you talked about the goalie, save percentage 61, it just keeps rising. Ball into the flat, Golden West going to look over towards Ashley Hogan. Hogan wants to go with the skip pass across. She will find Nieves. Nieves inside, just goes wide. Looked like it got tipped by Aritam just for a moment. Persephone Taylor with a shot on goal, but that doesn't end up going in. So Fullerton College will take possession with 5.40 left to go in the third. Here's Liberto, Liberto looking for someone, finds Jackson. Jackson at the point, 
Goes back over to Jayevsky. Far side skips that one towards the goal, and it will be saved by Golden West. Possession kept with Fullerton College as it last ended up going off of the arm of Evelyn Teeter. And the Hornets are going to control on the far side. Jayevsky inside of five. Now scoot her way back towards the green, looking for a teammate. 20 on the shot clock as Fullerton will move it over. Finds Liberto in the left flat. Gets fouled. Underneath it goes over to Sarah Powers, and Powers gets that one taken away from her. It's a nice job there, Mark, by Golden West collapsing on Powers. They knew where that setup was going to go, and they were able to make sure they got the pressure on before it got set. Yeah, they're used to watching the Hornets go out to the outside and then dropping it in the middle, so a little pre-read by the defense. Towards the inside, they try and go centerman, but instead it ends up getting taken away by Jayevsky, and here's where Fullerton College exceeds, getting themselves into transition and trying to outswim their opponents. Sarah Powers in a battle going one-on-one -on, -one on the far side with Kayla Nieves. Instead, Aritam says, you know what, let's slow things down. We've got time on our side and a 15-to-1 score as this will go over to Halushka, now to Jayevsky. Jayevsky looking for a teammate, tries to skip it in. That one gets blocked. So Jayevsky with three straight shots, crossbar, save, and blocked. And with 4.06 left to go on the clock, it's 15 to one, Fullerton College with the lead. And one thing you like about Gabe Martinez as a coach is that everybody gets to swim. This does nothing but build up this team as conference goes on. Ryan, if somebody gets sick, hurt, you've got replacement. The Lewis goes down low and misses the shot. One more time, a nice opportunity by Daniela Giron. Just can't make the turn because the defense got on top of her. You mentioned Fullerton College getting the opportunity for everyone to get into the pool in competition. That's one thing that we talked to Coach Gabriel Martinez about last week, and he mentioned exactly that. He likes to be able to go up and get his underclassmen some opportunities. Nice save by Evelyn Teeter, and she's able to read that on the left-hand side, and... Sarah Ward gets that one saved away. 15 to one is our score. You weren't kidding about the glare over here. Oh, I tell you. You looked like 145 pounds walking towards me. There is no glare that can do that for me. Ashley Hogan looking for a shot. That gets blocked. Nice hand up there by Riley Jackson and she's able to deflect that away. Aritem with the ball. Going to take a look up the pool. Far side, she'll go to Carmen Liberto. Liberto now into the awaiting arms of Alexandra Halushka. Halushka with six seconds left on the shot clock. There's a shot that ends up getting saved off the line. A chance for Liberto. She goes with a shot from the right flat, but it ends up going off of one hand, staying on the line, and the far side official says, you know what, that was close, but it didn't get fully across. Riley Jackson, looking at her teammates, seeing what the coverage is. Center person, there's another goal for Golden West. And that's Daniela Jerome that gets it. That's her 30th goal of the season. When you look at her, she's been the one. The one who hasn't gotten the attacks today is her partner with 49, and that is Lily Worley, who's been quiet in this entire game against Fullerton. One thing that you'll notice so far from Fullerton College is the head always on a swivel. We see all too often, especially in community college water polo, is that defenses have a tendency to get stagnant. They'll watch a point person or someone in the flat end up getting an opportunity to hold the ball for a second, and you'll see them pressure high up as that shot ends up hitting crossbar and going wide. You'll see the high pressure, but they don't realize, hey, you know what, I've got to turn around and see what our coverage is. And if I'm too far outside, what our coverage should be. But in this case, Fullerton College doing pretty well coverage-wise, goes into the center. Here's a chance for Golden West, and Riley Jackson is going to get called for a foul. Eight seconds left on the shot clock. 
Little dump in that's going to go into the awaiting arms of Worley. Worley with a shot, and that's going to be saved by Aritam. Worley being denied all day, Ryan, and that's the thing I think it is. And we're going to get, I think Gabe's going to call a 30-second timeout here to talk over the defense. So we're going to get a 30-second timeout by Fullerton. The Hornets, 15. The Rustlers, 2, here on 90.1. KBPK. Hey, don't forget, later on tonight, we get done here with water polo. We walk over to Riling Collie Gym and do what? What was that, Mark? I'm sorry. I'm just, <laughs> I'm getting, you help me out here, baby. Colleen Riley. Colleen Clark. Riley. See, that's what I said, didn't I? No, no. I'll be sure to clip that later. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. I'm getting sunbaked over here, man, you know. But you know what, Mark? I'm melanoma guy. <laughs> But you know what, Mark? You are absolutely right. Colleen Riley Court, we will have some live volleyball action as that shot ends up going wide. That will be at 6 p.m., the CRTV 145 class on the campus of Fullerton College, bringing you that live game action there from Colleen Riley Court. Where? Colleen Riley Court. Yeah, that's what I thought I said. There we go. Okay. Near side. Golden West going to take it. <laughs> Ashley Hogan with the ball under a minute to play in the third quarter. She'll reset up top. Goes for Worley. Worley, another opportunity for her. And you talked about her being quiet today, but Aritim sniffing out both of the, the last two opportunities. Yeah, and you look at her at 61 now. She's about 74% on saves this season in the goal for this Hornet water polo team. She's going to let the clock just tick down. She waits for the shot clock to get to about three. Let's see if she chucks it at two. She chucks it at 1.2. And she'll dump it into the corner. And with a change of possession at 3.71 seconds, it gets taken over by Golden West, who will hang on to end the third. So at the end of three quarters of play, it is 15-2 Fullerton College with the lead. You are watching Fullerton College Water Polo here on 90.1 KBPK. Hey, I've got to ask you, you've been around Gabe Martinez and you've watched what he's done here. But when he stretches the bench, which he's done today, does he lose anything? No, and that's one of the big things actually that I asked him about is when you end up going to the bench, is there anything that you notice difference-wise that you have to go with a skill set change or at least change what you're looking for on attack? And he said very simply, he puts in his players early on in the season to go in as six or seven, or excuse me, five or six person units. So that way they're each able to go in there and act like they are the starters themselves. So for him, it's not necessarily that he has reserves on the bench, but in his view, it's he has extra starters. People that he feels that on any other program in the state of California would have the opportunity to start for their respective programs. So it'd be like, it'd be like me sending in a nickelback and things like that, changing up my defense. I might drop five defensive backs in to play a nickel package. It's not that I'm sending in five reserves. I'm just doing into the package. That's what he's got with his entire team, different packages. No, it's different. Okay. So instead of going and saying, okay, with my, my twos and threes on the defensive side of the football, I have to run a different type of package. Okay. Instead, you say my twos and threes are just as good as running my standard package defense, that they can go in there and I trust them to do exactly that. As we take a look at the Orange Empire Conference standings here in just a moment, you see Orange Coast and Fullerton right at the top. Orange Coast sitting at number one for the moment being because they have a 2-0 and record in conference. Fullerton right behind them at 1-0 and and a 12-1 and in or out of conference record. Then you have Riverside at 13-4. and We've seen Riverside already this season. Golden West 9-7 and and a 1-1 one and one in conference record. And then Saddleback and Cypress finish off the Orange Empire Conference with 0-2 in conference records. So we're getting set here for the fourth quarter of play in just a few moments. Ryan Osborne, Mark Pavlovich, Joseph Pavlenko. All joining you here live from the Fullerton College pool. Just as much water as an aqueduct, but both teams flowing from either side. So I've got the big sandwich on my left and the big puddle on my right. 
something to drink, something to eat. I'm doing great right here in the middle on 90.1 KBPK. So what I'm hearing is clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right, and here's Mark stuck in the middle with us. We're underway here in the fourth quarter as Halushka is going to take possession for Fullerton College. Fullerton going with a sub on the fly on the far side. You notice that, Mark. Jordan Lughart came in just to win the ball back for the Hornets and then immediately gets subbed out for Carmen Liberto. Underway here in the fourth. Fullerton's first shot on ends up getting parried away. Change in net for Golden West as Adriano Marguia is going to take over. And you look at the far side, Ryan Osborne, the hierarchy of the athletic department for the Hornets is out here watching this game today. Yeah, you mentioned that, athletic director, in addition to Dean of Athletics. Also, I should mention here on the air, if you tune into the coaches show on 90.1 KBPK next week, we've got golf. Was able to set that up with our golf coach across the way prior to me walking in here a few moments ago. There's a shot and a goal. That's going to go in for Halushka, so she's got four today. Do I bring my Beckley out here when I'm, when I'm talking to him? You know what? That might be a good idea. And for those who were able to tune in last year when there was a golf conversation on the air on the coaches show on 90.1 KBPK, you'll notice that Mark is the one who ended up doing the interview because at one point you just realized that great content is great content as there's a change of possession for Golden West as Fullerton trying to get to this loose ball. It's going to end up going to Liberto. Liberto now for Jayevsky. Jayevsky has to muscle one off. There's a foul. They go across to the right wing where it's going to be found by Riley Jackson. Jackson trying to set things up. Halushka, the left-handed tosser, getting set. There's a shot, and she scores again. Well, at least initially, that was the plan. But Fullerton College with a foul on the inside. They will end up changing the possession, and Golden West takes over. But going back to Mark having that great content of an interview last year with the golf staff at Fullerton College. Might do something similar this year where I just give Mark a lavalier microphone and say, you know what, go ahead, have at it. Talk to this entire golf program and we'll see where it leads from there. Shot clock expiration on Golden West, so they have to give it over to Fullerton College. Alushka looking to push forward. And the Hornets are going to get a couple in here in just a couple of moments. You know, the one thing that I, I do miss on all these stats though, Ryan, I would like to see a diversity on what teams win by on an average. Do you win by goal 14 goals? Yeah, goal difference. Do you win by 14 goals a game, by 12 goals a game? Because that lets me know defensively where teams stand defensively. All I find out is where they stand offensively. I'm sure if we work the numbers, you and I could figure it out but I'd like to see that stat-wise. Here's a chance on the inside with Sarah Powers. Powers trying to set it up on the backhand, but instead, the Hornets turn it over. So you look at Fullerton College on each of the last four possessions, Mark, three of the last four turnovers. Yeah, but it's like you said, Gabe is now letting everybody get in the pool so that he'll get set up for a conference run and the playoffs, being able to go deep against all his competition. Chance on the near side. It ends up going to Escano. Escano tries to find the center person. That goes far post and will end up being sent away. What a great double team by Luska and Jayevsky against the offensive threat by Golden West College. I'm not mistaken, I believe that's Jordan Lughart in goal for Fullerton College right now, Mark. Could be. As she switches caps with Alex Aritam. Fullerton College, that isn't necessarily unheard of for Coach Gabriel Martinez's staff, as in the past, this season alone, Kate De La Mora and Adriana Wong have both played in net for Fullerton. So now Lughart gets her opportunity. 
16 to two is our score. Dryevsky trying to pressure this one outside. Gets called for a foul, has to backpedal. Excuse me, backstroke towards the middle and it will end up being turned right over to the Hornets. Stretch pass, out and away it goes to Liberto. Liberto with the spin, ends up getting that one taken away from her and the Rustlers will have it. Dryevsky up quickly on that and she gets called for two fouls in the last 30 seconds. You know, I think water polo is the only sport where it's got utility by your name, which is a compliment. You know, it's not, hey, we'll try and find you a spot. It's you're that talented that you can play any place. So it's the difference between this sport and other sports where the term utility is thrown at a player. Jordan up ahead goes to Halushka. Halushka gets fouled. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. And Halushka trying to go to the near side. Wasn't able to get it over to Ella Brock in time. Excuse me, that was to Sarah Ward. And it's taken away. Bella Schultz. Freshman with 15 goals, had it for a moment. Now looking for someone else, they end up going to center. Center goes over to Hiron, and Hiron gets a goal. So you were talking about her having a lot of chances for this Golden West squad, and she has each of the three for Golden West College. Yeah, she really has been dynamic. She's got 28 goals this season. And I guess you would look at somebody and say, well, you're the tiger on the team when you've got four exclusions. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen to three is our score. Here on ninety point one KBPK. Ryan Osborne, Mark Pavlovich, Joseph Pavlenko, Garrett Geimer as well joining us. In addition to RJ over to our left and Jerry Roque. Little rainbow shot that ends up going into the arms of the wrestlers and they will push forward. Sixteen to three. Yeah, if I was a protester right now, just jumped in the pool to save the dolphins. Do you think I? You know, it would be okay. I'd pay to see that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Under three to play here on KVPK. There's a save by Lughart, so she gets her first. Ends up getting pressured heavily for a moment. And the wrestlers nearly with a quick takeaway there on a surprise pressure by Hiron. There goes Carmen. Anushka Jayevsky being told to cover back for Fullerton and a goal. Liberto was able to swim right down the middle of the pool and had an easy opportunity from about six meters out. You know, guys, I finally have found my calling. You water polo, dressed in white, which I look good in, and a lot of hair on your face. I could be an official for water polo. Mark, you would get in way too many argu arguments. Hey, no arguing in water polo. <laughs> you question a referee, you get a yellow card. There's a coach on this uh, <laughs> cement you could ask that about. Lughart with a beautiful save there. Ends up going off her hand, off the crossbar, sidebar and out. And with under a minute 30 to play, Fullerton College with possession and a 17-3 lead. Down the middle. Riley Jackson looking for a teammate. Instead, it ends up getting turned over to Alexia Cooper. Cooper has a lot of room to swim with. Ends up with a three on two. Here comes Jayevsky from the near side, and she might end up getting an exclusion for this one. And she does indeed. Kayla Nieves, near side, at the wing. Has the angle for a moment, ends up getting it taken away. There's Powers, another save by Lughart. One more shot over top by Hiron, and she tries to go quickly with it, but instead it goes over top of the goal. And with one minute exactly on the clock, Fullerton College can hold for one more possession. 17 to three, our score between two Orange Empire Conference opponents. Hornets try and bring it in, Golden West. 
with a fresh 30 and some room to work with, but having to get up the pool quickly. Everyone waiting, looking for a little movement there as that's going to go over to Cooper. Cooper finds someone near side. It goes over to Scholes. Scholes, three seconds left. Lughart, another save. Jayevsky ends up losing her cap for a moment. And the shot clock turned off because that is going to close this one out. Fullerton College with another win in the books, and the Fullerton College Hornets are going to go to 13 and 1 this season. They're going to go to 13 and 1 this season, and in conference they will go to 2 and 0, and a share of first place with Orange Coast. So, Mark, very quickly, you take a look at this game. Fullerton College controlled from the beginning. Yeah, they really did. When you look at what they've done season-wise, conference-wise, coming into this game, 18 goals for. Two goals against, you look at it again today, that now makes 35 goals for, five goals against. So you look at basically at 35 to five, I'm gonna say that's about a 8.3 ratio right there for them on the offensive side. It's just amazing when you think of what they can do 35 to five in as many games as they have now had here in conference. Domination is the best way to call it. So Fullerton College with a 17 to three win. That is a final here. And for the Fullerton College Hornets, once again, they will go up to 13 and one this season. Golden West will drop to nine and eight. So we're gonna sign off. We're going to get some post game interviews of our own for the coaches show this upcoming week in just a few moments. But that concludes our live coverage of this water polo match between Fullerton College and Golden West. We want to thank Garrett Geimer in addition to Jerry Roque, RJ over to our left as well, and Joseph Pavlenko. Eh, I guess Mark. No, Mark Pavlovich as well, and myself, Ryan Osborne. You have been watching Fullerton College Water Polo on 90.1 KBPK.